All right, what's going on? It's Bobby Skinner talking Giants, doing a bonus breakdown on a bonus channel. Looking at Evan Neal. Obviously, if you don't know me, I do an offensive line report every week for the New York Giants. This week, you had Josh Azudu at left tackle for the first time. Marcus McKeithen making his first start. And I wanted to talk about John Michael Schmitz. And I didn't put Evan Neal on there because, hey, it's not great competition, so it's not great to judge him. But you know what? I wanted to do something. I created this channel for my social media breakdowns. So I think this is a good way, hey, maybe we can put some extra content on here. And, hey, Evan Neal, out of those five guys up there, is kind of his growth is the most important. So I did want to talk about this Cardinals game because it wasn't horrible, um, but it wasn't great either, right? Like you see some of the same issues, but you saw better results versus an Arizona Cardinals defense. So subscribe to this channel. It has like 20 subscribers when I'm making this video. So please subscribe. If you don't subscribe, it's really not worth it. Um so, yeah, please subscribe to the dang video. Let's get into it. All right, we're, we go through pass protection first, obviously. Lined up here at right tackle. Let's watch these feet. This is good. It's probably his best rep of the day. Feet, watch. We're staying square. One foot. Two foot. Three. Get into it. Get a punch against. He's, the punch is kind of always high, depending on who he's playing. But good feet. Absorbs it. Good stuff. Next play. Like solid feet. Gets a... And these Cardinals put these wide rushers, man. So it's... You know, they're going to have some... They're going to be generating some power. But I think Neil does a solid job to absorb it. And I know, like, hey, the guy that is getting in on the sack. But that's not on Neil. But again, the watch the feet. Bam, bam, bam. We get to that third step we're reading. You see he's going the power, you punch. Again, the punch is high, but you're not going to have the best placement on this. And hey, he gets some push, but feet stay steady. Absorb that conk. Uh, absor absorb that, you know, that power. Re-anchor. Again, not, not blaming him for that at all. Next play. This is not a bad rep, but here's what I'm going to say. Take one more step. One. Right? We got this wide nine. We're setting more vertical. Two. Three. You see he's going to that outside. Take one more step. Instead of opening up like this and giving him a corner, if you just take one more step, like right to, like to here. You get to meet him head on, and he doesn't get to attack one half of your body and one arm, one arm bar this around the corner, right? So if you just take one more step, just take one more step instead of opening the corner. I feel like I could do him a, a lot of good against that rusher. I also noticed this. You didn't see this much. But you did see a one arm punch, and I kind of like it. Feet, one, two, we're reading. Now he throws it a little early. But I kind of like the one-arm punch because like, hey, you're still punching. But you're not letting these guys use your arms, you know, against you. Which guys would like chop at his arms and get him falling, moving forward. And, one, and it also helps him keep better posture too, right? Where when you two-hand punch, it just makes you more likely to... Be you know be top be head heavy, so and he's got the strength to put that, and then the right hand comes with much better placement, with much better placement. So I I like that. I I kind of want to see him work that a little more, right? It just kind of helps you stay more disciplined in your punch, which again the his punch gets it got used it uses uh, gets used against him a lot. So I kind of like that. Here versus B.J. Ojolari using a move that. BJ Ojari loves, which is called Ghost Move. And again, hey, you're going to see the, the two hand punch here, right? So one foot step, two step, three step. And I would just, there's nothing illegal of just taking one more step. I know you don't want to overset and give up the inside, but see how, hey, we're two hand punching, we're leaning forward, and our feet aren't like moving with this. And so BJ Ojolari throws this move called Ghost Move, where you throw like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bull you," and then you pull those arms and dip and bend around the corner, and it leaves Neil chasing, right? Because 
He's punched. He's tried to throw his weight into this. Well, now you're throwing your weight into air because he got you to mistime that punch and pulls his hands. Uh, next play. You see him quick set here. Now, people are like, oh, don't want your feet crossing over. Here on these quick sets, you can. But here's the thing. You got to get to it and reload quickly, right? So it's a little slow. Like You got to... And it's a little slow. And you see how the... See how high these hands are? He just loses leverage, man. Maybe that's the issue with being so tall, right? So he loses leverage. And 52 is able to break those arms off and then get that inside move. And then here on play action, 52 works a little push and pull. I mean, you're, you got to be stronger than him, Neil. And again, break hands off you. Like... When he's got that inside leverage, literally, and we, we if you watch the earlier part, I talk about with JMS doing it. Pull your hands, pull your hands, and literally chop. Just chop and get his weight forward. Like, call some snatch and trap. Just like, at this point right here, don't try and get your hands outside. Just just literally, I mean, like, two, take your hands like two fists and just slam them down like freaking Donkey Kong. But instead, you're getting beat and your quarterback gets hit. Also, I want to point out on this. I saw because the centers do this or the the Cowboys did this with their center last week. And the Giants did this with Gwinski too in this game. It's like, oh my gosh, look how freaking smart John Michael Schmitz is. Hey, and I think John Michael Schmitz is smart. I did a breakdown on uh, a blitz pickup he did. This is not a good play by JMS. He should be. And this is like this isn't just him like being a lone ranger. This is JMS doing what he's being coached to do, but he's late to it. Like, he should, like, hey, you check on 92, turn your head, see that this guy's playing outside, you're uncovered, you should be all, You should be turning and going. But instead, he kind of hesitates and then turns, and he's late. And that wasn't even with a free rusher, right? Like, that's with Neil occupying this player. So if this guy pl just played the backside originally, I mean, there might have been a sack. So you got to be quicker with that. Big play to Darren Waller. Uh, these next two plays, bad stunt pickup, which is a theme for Evan Neal and the right side of the offensive line. I mean, we're just slow to react here. Taking our steps. You see how he just... You get... You want to be powering down now. Now. You want to take this step, this foot. You want to have to push, like... Pushing you like at this point, you need to push off this foot and power down. Instead, he takes another step because he's worried he got beaten around the corner, and that leaves him vulnerable. Because guess what? Now you're taking the step, and he's already gotten to your inside shoulder. So, the way to beat that now is you drop your foot back and you're leaning. And guess what? Now you crash into your right guard, and you've worked the stunt for them to, to you know perfection. Earlier in the game, same thing. Same thing. That's why it's like after the second step you're reading. So he's supposed to be reading on this second step, right? Like it doesn't look like they're reading most of the time on that second step. It's like, oh, they're just getting to the third step. But at this step you're reading and you should be reading, hey, he's 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 working inside. And even here, you could still you can still salvage this, but you got to really push off this foot and get this foot to either be right, bring it back here or just power it down at this angle, which is ideal but harder to do. But you're just slow and late, and that leaves you leaning. And guess what? Now you're crashing to your right guard, and Zayvon Collins is getting around the edge. I thought he was good in the run game, working a lot of combo blocks with McKeithen. Still some false step in there, too. Like, you notice how you see McKeithen, and McKeithen leans a little too much, but you see McKeithen has, takes a step forward. Actually, never mind. This is not the one. This is another one. But get, get some power, roll the hips through it. Get push, displace this player into the other gap. Linebacker comes over here. Bam. Good job, Evan Neal. Next play. I like it. I like it. It's nasty. Give that help to McKeithen. Fire off. You can lean a little bit. 
Get onto this linebacker. Keep your feet moving, driving. Get big. Next play. Again, I don't see. This is like kind of the false. Maybe I don't think he's being taught that, like that drop step. I just don't think he is because if he if he was, I think you'd see McKeithen do it too, and McKeithen doesn't do it. But still gets good push. Got some lean on him, but it's okay. Pick up this linebacker. I mean, it's good stuff. He gets folded over because he's the running back. That like again, those are those. That's you know a couple of runs Saquon got off of him. Um, and then last play. This is a dispel the social media screenshot. Now I think he could have had some more awareness, but this is not technically the wrong thing that Neil did on this. Neil, yeah, he's helping on this because he knows he's got at least a tight end chip out here. Because, you know, uh, or block and release. Neil's responsibility is here. This is his responsibility because Bellinger's going to get out here and run around. Now, hey, it's not his fault that this player fall, stayed in man while I'm Bellinger. But that's, that's originally, like, this is supposed to be a block and release. So, like, this help right here is extra. McKeithen is, suspo is, is supposed to stay on this. And Saquon is responsible for this. For the linebacker, right? Like Saquon's going to pick this up. There's a reason why Saquon Saquon's not just free balling and helping. Saquon is this is his block. You know, because if he was just free balling and helping, he'd see this guy. McKe this is on McKeithen. And you get a free rusher. So this is on McKeithen. Alright, so hope you guys enjoyed that. Um hey, a hell of a lot better than week one. You know. Now again. People hate when you say it, but you do have to consider the team they're playing against. Don't talk to me about six sacks that the Cardinals had week one. They are the fakest sacks ever. I put them on social media. So please subscribe to this channel so it's worth it. I want to see this channel at 20 million subscribers by the end of the day. I appreciate you guys. Let's go Big Blue.